are the Pleiadians, a collective of energy from the Pleiades. We have a long history. Our ancestors came from another universe that had achieved completion, a universe. You are simply working on a planet coming to completion, and we are here to help you with that task. This completion or transformation has been heralded by many for eons. It is an important time. What happens on Earth now will affect the entire universe. Our ancestors were some of the original planners of Earth, orchestrators who seeded worlds and civilizations with creativity and love. Because of their qualifications, they like to orchestrate worlds just as conductors love to conduct. Open your mind. Open your mind. Some of the creator gods were master geneticists. The master geneticists designed various species, some human, some animal, by playing with the varieties of DNA that the sentient civilizations contributed to make Earth into this exchange center of information, this light center, this living library. The original planners of Earth were members of the family of light, beings who worked for and were associated with an aspect of consciousness called light. Light is information. The family of light created the information center they had conceived of. They designed a place where galaxies would contribute their information and where all would be able to participate and share their specific knowledge. Earth was to be a cosmic library, a place of incredible beauty that experimented with how information could be stored through frequencies and through the genetic process. The project of the Living Library on Earth was eventually fought over. It looked enticing enough to be owned by some. During Earth's early history, there were wars in space for ownership of this planet. Skirmishes took place, and Earth became a place of duality. Certain creator gods who had the right to do whatever they wanted, because Earth is a free will zone, came in and took over. When this skirmish occurred, a certain group of entities fought in space and won the territory of Earth. These new owners did not want the native Earth species, the humans, to be informed of what took place. Uninformed, the species would be easier to control. That is why light is information and darkness is lack of information. These entities beat out light and Earth became their territory. These new owners who came here 300,000 years ago are the magnificent beings spoken of in your Bible, in the Babylonian and Sumerian tablets, and in texts all over the world. They came to Earth and rearranged the native human species. They rearranged your DNA in order to have you broadcast within a certain limited frequency band whose frequency could feed them and keep them in power. The original human was a magnificent being whose 12 strands of DNA were contributed by a variety of sentient civilizations. When the new owners came in, they worked in their laboratories and created versions of humans with a different DNA the two-stranded double helix DNA. The original DNA pattern was left within the human cells, yet it was not functional. It was split apart, unplugged. Within human cells are light-encoded filaments, fine gossamer threads of energy that carry information. When these gossamer threads are working together like a cable, the way fiber optics works, they formed a helix of your DNA. When you were rearranged, you were left with a double helix. Anything that was unnecessary for survival and that would keep you informed was unplugged, leaving you with only a double helix that would lock you into controllable, operable frequencies. We, as Pleiadians, came back through time into what would perhaps be called our past, 
in the vestige of representatives of light. We came back in order to share a frequency with you, a frequency that each one of you has agreed to carry on this planet in order to change the DNA of the rearranged human race. The plan to change the frequency modulation affecting the human species entails the rebundling of your DNA and of the light encoded filaments. Earth is assisting in its own way the evolution of the universe. It is where the plan begins to blossom and what happens on Earth is going to affect many, many worlds. Your DNA will evolve from two helixes to 12 helixes. These 12 helixes correspond to energy centers or chakras inside and outside of your body. This process is an incredible evolutionary leap for one to be involved in and it is going to take place on an accelerated path for the next 20 years. There are those who have already received a realignment of the 12 strands of DNA, the 12 helixes. These 12 spiral strands of DNA interact with one another in the body and outside of the body. The connection of the 12 strands means that the 12 energy or information centers can begin to function and send information back and forth to one another. When human DNA begins to rebundle as a 12-stranded helix system and this information is acted upon, there will be incredible power. Individuals, simply by coming together and jointly intending what they want, jointly becoming a telepathic receptacle for energies from all over the cosmos, will change the face of the universe. There will be a merging of identities a merging of cultures, an infusion of many new world orders, and there will be much chaos and confusion. As members of the family of light, you can simply observe this, knowing that chaos and confusion must come to break down the system so that it can be rebuilt with light. As members of the family of light, you can understand that there is an evolutionary process taking place and that those who can handle the changing frequencies by all means will evolve. There are many misconceptions about the idea of Godhood. The universes are full of intelligent beings who have, over time, evolved and developed all sorts of capabilities and functions to serve their needs to express themselves creatively. The importance behind existence and consciousness is creativity, and creativity takes many forms. Eons ago, Earth was but a thought in the mind of great beings who had set before themselves the task of creating new forms of existence. Many of these beings affected the creation of this universe, and you have termed them God. In actuality, they were extraterrestrial, light-bearing energies far removed from Prime Creator. We rarely use the term God with a big G. If we were to use that term, we would be referring to the entity we know as Prime Creator. Prime Creator, in its own personal implosion through love, endowed all things with consciousness. All things are Prime Creator on Prime Creator's journey. The evolution of consciousness and the ability to house information is what allows one to come into the proximity of Prime Creator. Many people on Earth have felt that they have merged with God. They may have merged with a portion of Prime Creator that best suited their vibration at the time. The total vibration of Prime Creator would destroy the physical vehicle in an instant because it cannot house that much information. Those that represent God to you are but a minute portion of Prime Creator. The Creator Gods who have been ruling this planet have the ability to become physical, though mostly they exist in other dimensions. 
they keep earth in a certain vibrational frequency, why they create emotional trauma to nourish themselves. There are some beings who honor life before everything else. And there are also beings who do not honor life. Open your mind. is going to reveal itself to you. That is the process. You don't have to go looking for it because this revelation is your heritage and who you are. As the DNA begins to form new strands, these new strands will travel along a nervous system in the body that is being developed at this time and memories will come flooding into your consciousness. You must work to develop this nervous system, to pull light into your body, to oxygenate your system, to learn how to move through energy accelerations, and to call more ideas and experiences into your body. As this process begins to grow and nurture itself in your body, simply observe it, for you will want to know how to access it. Getting stuck in your dramas is like reading one of your books over and over again and not letting all of the information in other books come together. There is more. There is a whole story. DNA holds the code. It holds the blueprint of identity, the plan for existence, the history of the universe, and the history of life in this particular locale. And it is stored within the cells of humans. The original DNA of the stewards of this planet, the human occupants, had a genetic blueprint that was based on the number 12. The 12 strands of genetic material are therefore connected to many other representatives or informational sources that also number 12. Remember, reality mirrors reality. The 12 strands of information hooked the human occupant up with corresponding information centers in and out of the body. We call Earth the living library because you all have an image of what a library is. It is a place where information is stored and available. We use this analogy because we intend to evoke the image that everywhere you go, you are in a library. You just haven't figured out yet how to translate the information or recognize where it is in the library. Humans were designed to be the key to access this information in the living library. Right now, 12 is the system that connects. And if you look around, you will see it everywhere. It was a symbolic insertion for a reason so that you would someday figure out that it connects you to something somewhere else. It is not your natural rhythm, but it is a group agreement to use the energy of 12 in many different systems of reality. It is a coded formula. Many things that make no sense to the logical mind make a tremendous amount of sense to the light encoded filaments and to the body as it is becoming more sensitive. There was a reason to build the libraries in the first place, for the pulsation of tyranny was beating at the time. There was concern on the part of certain energies, the keepers of time, that information might get into the wrong hands. So, very playfully, the libraries were designed in many different modes. 
The other libraries or worlds are not at all like your world. The task for the keepers of time was to engineer a project through which consciousness could evolve, have information, and be utilized to access information. Originally, the role of the human occupant as the way shower to the library was one of great honor. Without the human occupant, one could not access the library, and the more tuned in the human occupant was, the more one could access the library. The human occupant had a certain pride in being loose enough and connected enough to find the data in all things. You are going to discover someday that sex is part of the process. When you own your own sexuality, you will see the opportunities you have to express it, and you will decide whether you want to express it in those ways or not. Sexuality has been used to spark the library card. There is something very dangerous in this, however, because it has been misused. That is why it is very important to own your sexuality and be very certain whom you share it with. We don't want any of you to be in a position to be bought or enticed. You are advised to look and see if you experience others as being honest and having integrity or whether they are flattering you. You are becoming stewards for power. You benefit by participating in the event of life. By simply being in physicality, you are endowed with experiences and characteristics that you cannot gather anywhere else. To be part of physicality on Earth at this particular time and during the last 200,000 to 300,000 years is a very potent event indeed because it means that you have come into a place where darkness has been reigning. The nature of existence on earth has been a struggle between light and darkness for many eons. Some would call it a struggle between good and bad or upliftment and evil. We will simply say that it is an event and place where certain laws and rules exist and that Earth is certainly not the only place in existence that deals with these kinds of challenges. You are in the decade that we have labeled the unnamed decade, the 1990s. It is during this time that all the great events are going to begin to occur upon Earth. Many events have already been occurring but they have been sequestered away in little compartmentalizations of officialdom. Those of you who are ancients, who are the masters awakening, as you awaken, we want you to be able to see out of the ancient eyes and to awaken something that you know, something that you remember, something that is deep inside. You are going to need to trust yourself and rely upon yourself. You need to be able to see, to understand what you are seeing, and to translate the grander vision for others. It is up to you, and only you, to undo the locks and allow yourselves to go forward. We have spoken about your beliefs and the importance of thought. We emphasize over and over again that you are a result of thought that thought is, and that this is the essence of understanding, manipulating, and working within your world.